we implement it. And then analytics. To me, in terms of CRM data, we provide reporting and analytics. We are looking at tools to pull in every aspect of the call center business, which will give you the holistic view that will include ACD. But Trigger will be a major component to that. So adoption was critical. Like I said, there were a number of people, never heard of Sugar, never heard of Levimentum, never heard of either. To me, it was how are we going to drive adoption? And uh, you know, we worked in tandem to provide quick, easy training. I, I would think key benefit was the easy use on the application. You know, so there was very quick adoption. And it was line of business focus, program focus. And like I said, we had to be live in six weeks. So concurrent to the build was the training and adoption. And what's funny is we'll talk about some, some takeaways. The need to train on the CRM kind of went away. It was, it was apparent that it was easy enough to use, simple enough to use, that now it was just line of business. Okay, when you take a call, here's what you're doing. We're not talking about functions of the CRM. It really, it, it's just, it's not a requirement. And that's how we talk about business process training. Adoption was so quick, and there were a number of reasons. I want to talk about this because we talk about pricing. So in terms of cost per seat per month, excellent. Development cost, excellent. You know, so to me, I'm not worrying about developers, QA, uh, migration, DBAs. I don't have all those people. So now, when I look at how much I used to spend, it was a $2 million budget to manage our CRM. And the concern of what am I doing with these people when they're on the bench, morale. People start to wonder, what am I doing next? To push that all off on these guys makes me very happy. But the other thing I want to talk about, which was the key for adoption, was how quickly it happened and how cost effectively it happened. So we, from an IT perspective, we're always asked, where do you spend your money? So making my life easier is the ability to say, this cost I can allocate to this LOB. And with a SaaS solution CRM model, if Humana has 200 seats and I'm paying 200 times X, I just ship that over to them. There's no concern about what fraction of the five DBAs goes to Humana? What fraction of the quality assurance people goes to Humana? All of that's off my books. I manage it, and it's a cost that comes out of my budget. But in terms of intercompany inter cost allocation, it simplified my life greatly. So now, they understand the cost. It's very clear to them. So they can make an easy decision. I'm talking about the operations folks within my company to say, you know what? I could pass it on. My margins are healthy enough to take it on. There's, it's, it makes it much clearer, much easier. So normally what we're doing is we're usually baking the cost into the per minute, per hour, per agent, whatever it is, and we'll pass through with a small market for PM the Levimentum work. Unless it's for something we're laying across the entire infrastructure. So with that, the number of programs we ran and I said this when I first called them, it, it's, it's going to go quick. As I said, we've got 750 agents on it in eight months, and that fluctuates every 90 days. It's one of the beautiful things. And one of the other beautiful things about that 90-day true up was that 2012, I've got 5,000 sugar users. Could I say, you know what, the economy of scale is not there. My budget is now insane. I could probably develop in this in-house. And if I ever do that and I come back next year and say I did it, somebody hit me. But it gives me the flexibility to make that decision. So now I can say, you know what, for this line of business, I can build this myself. It's easy. And it happened. It just recently happened. We had 75 seats of sugar slated for, it was like almost an insurance policy. When the client CRM went down monthly, one week in a month, we would use sugar. And so the question was asked, hey, listen, do we really need to do that? All we really need is like a downline form. And then we'll flush the database after we use it. We'll go and re-enter everything. So for that line of business, we pulled it back and said, you know what? Come this end of 90 days, we're going to take that off. We'll do a downline form. We'll host it because it's not really a production environment. It really is just a temporary cache of data that we re-enter and we flush it. So that gives me that flexibility. 
So, as I said, right now, multiple centers in North America using the CRM, using sugar. We're going, I don't have anything slated for CRM in any of the international countries yet, but it will happen. And like I said, there's multiple programs, multiple lines of business, and we've been able to support them all, and quickly. We have still not missed our promise to not be able to beat or meet operations days. It's served by a single CRM, it's on demand, it's hosted. So we talk about what were the goals. The goals for me, and I feel selfish in saying it, but I want to sleep at night. You know, I got to tell you, one of the things that kept me up at night in the previous stint was CTI, databases. You know, it was almost all CRM dependent. And to me, knowing that's safe, sound, secure now, I could have a PlayStation Network moment and kick myself, but hopefully I don't. Right now it's going really, really well, and uh, very happy, very happy. And as I said, Levamentum, the fact that they can develop code that goes on Sugar's host platform, it's fantastic. I don't have to worry about bringing it in, but I do have the flexibility. I can bring it in. I can get to a place where if my infrastructure is building up robust enough and I've got the staff, maybe I bring it in. I doubt it, but I could. And I think that's one of the major components of what we like to provide our clients. We like to provide flexibility. I like to have flexibility in my vendors and my solutions. And with this, as I said, from a cost model, from a deployment model, I have the flexibility. I can make decisions. And as I said, I don't have developers. I don't have QA. I don't have DBAs. I don't have all those people. So the results, I think it's obvious I'm here speaking in front of you. It's been fantastic. It really has. Uh, it's gone really well. And uh, I'm here to sing Sugar and Love and praises. And we continue to move forward. You know, I just signed an SOW this morning. So the work continues to happen. We continue to build. We've been on schedule. We've been on budget. Haven't added a person to my staff. We're, hand we're managing 2,300 contact center seats. I have a staff of 18. That's it. That's one of the goals we wanted was to minimize. And there's other technologies we do. We, you know, we're a virtual desktop environment, which also plays into it. So the key was to keep our call center technology budget low, manageable, and flexible. So highlights, obviously, showing greater alignment, the integration, CTI, recording, dialers. You know, it's becoming pretty standard. And you see, if you see the booth, you see what they can provide. And there's no longer, you know, you have the old school telecom guys who everything has to be, you know, co-located with your equipment. It's no longer true. Web services, SIP services, I mean, it's all blurring those lines. I don't have to have everything sitting in a call center. I mean, in a data center. You know, so, what else do we have on here? Homegrown, you know. I don't want to do it. You know, companies talk about focusing on their core. For me, our core in terms of what we provide as a technology organization to our customers and our customer customers is flexibility. We've got to solve problems through technology. And we also have to keep voice and data networks up. That, that, that to me is paramount. So the majority of our time is spent in making sure the calls and the data get through. If I got to start worrying about what CRM function should be added to the core of my system, I told you, we spent, we had a team of 10 just developing the core systems. And then what happened was, every company that came in had a little bit of difference from the core, so we would take the, the source code, we'd modify it, and we didn't go back and modify the core, so we ended up with like 19 separate code sets with like three to four developers on each that knew it and God, I had to pay them too much because if they left, I was dead. All that's gone. And I love all those developers, but uh, I'll see them at lunch. Future, more CTI, flexible call scripting. We talk about events called features and you, you see it in the booths and you, you hear the talk. To me, 
call center is probably a thing of the past, you know, a session center, I don't know if that's too silly to say, but we want to blur the line between calls, tags, chats, uh, IVR. We want to be able to start passing data in a SaaS model, a web-based solution fits right in. So now when I move to SIP on the telecom side, it makes the integration with these guys even easier, even more powerful. Now CTI becomes what we're calling CRI. It's no longer computer telephony integration. It's more customer relevant information across any channel. So CTI is a thing of the past. We can get rid of TSAPI and just start passing data along with to any platform and pull it and pass it. You know, we also talk about IWR. We're talking to our clients about, forget about IVR. Interactive web response allows you to communicate on any channel. So anything that's web-based, and if a call is SIP-based, it's really web-based. You know, I mean, the protocols are web protocols. They, they pass over, you know, data. So now, all of a sudden, everything's blurred. It really is a web session. What is the endpoint that I'm communicating through changes, but it really is the same. It becomes transparent. So, that kind of wraps it up for us. I don't know how many questions there are. I don't know how long it took. Hopefully, less than a half hour. You have five minutes. All right. I, I want to, to just add one thing, Ken. I want to come back to this. I think well, being at this conference, um, I think there, there are a lot, especially for customers out there, the, the customers who are looking at, um, at CRM and, and contact center technology. There are a lot of options out there now, um, uh, in a lot of in a lot of ways, the, the homegrown uh, solutions that you see out there, quite frankly, were needed. But I know there are a lot of folks in that in that room over there uh, that have got good contact center solutions, good CRM solutions. Uh, we're not the only ones to have these. There are plenty of really good ones that are here at the uh, at the event. I think what's key though is understanding these lessons though. Um, there are a lot of things that having served call centers that people have been historically afraid of. The big one that Ken talked about was, oh, where my data? I'm so worried about my data being in my house. Your data is less secure in your house than in a SaaS environment, most likely. Um, and there's been concern about latency, speed, these things. The bottom line is, is these solutions are getting better. And we are seeing thousand user, multi-thousand user call centers running their environments successfully with lots of integration in complete SaaS environments. Our own, we're seeing competitors doing it. So if there's anything I'd like to, let, to tell you, it's get over some of these fears. I think Ken's kind of walked through a lot of these. Ken's actually lived the homegrown world, um, as a, a lot of folks I know have kind of lived that, that world before. So uh, any, any questions for, for Ken, really? Um, sure. So Ken, Ken and I will both be in our booth, I think we're at 53, um, so feel free to, to drop by. Um, if we have no questions... Um, if you want to call Jeffrey, don't call me. <laughs> well, I'll call you, don't worry about that. So. You got my number there. Right. I think you did it on purpose, you're going to send all the calls in there. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, well thank you guys, thank you guys for attending. Appreciate it.